So the first step in getting Great Britain and France involved in the war on the side of the Confederacy is to have them recognize the CSA as an independent country. By them recognizing them, they're basically saying that they don't see this as a rebellion and that they do see now the USA and the CSA as two separate countries. Now, unfortunately for the Confederacy, that doesn't happen. So they're trying to think of a way to sort of push Great Britain and France into doing this. So what they do is they place an embargo on Great Britain and France. And if you remember what an embargo is, an embargo is a ban on exports. So now we are banning exports to Great Britain and France, specifically cotton. So we're going to stop shipping cotton to Great Britain and France, sort of trying to, um, it's, this is almost like extortion. We're holding their cotton supply away from them um, until they do something that we want. Now Great Britain and France deeply resent their attempt to extort money and support from them. Um, so just like the last time we saw an embargo um, with Thomas Jefferson and the War of 1812, this embargo is not going to go well either. And instead of getting in the war and siding with Great Britain uh, and siding with the Confederacy, Great Britain and France instead turn to India and Egypt for their cotton supply. And by the time the Confederacy figures out that this plan is a horrible plan and that it's not working, the Union has already tightened up that blockade in the Atlantic and it's going to be too late and it's going to be impossible for them to repair that trade relationship with um, Great Britain and France anytime soon. So um, <clears throat> the war officially is on and the first real battle of the um, Civil War, the first battle that, um, I guess the second battle that we're going to discuss, the first battle in the war that we're going to discuss is going to be the first battle of Bull Run or the first battle of Manassas. So uh, Bull Run is the Union name for this battle and Manassas is the, is the uh, Confederate name for this battle. And we call it the first battle because there will be a second battle at Bull Run and at Manassas. So um, you need to make sure that you write down that it is the first. So uh, General Winfield Scott is no longer very quick. It was his time as the commander of Union armies was very short lived. Um, he has been replaced uh, with a guy named Irvin McDowell. <sighs> so Irvin McDowell is now commanding the uh, Union Army. And if you remember, Plan A for the Union is to invade Richmond. So. That's what Lincoln is pushing uh, McDowell to do to get the war uh, going. In July, he wants uh, McDowell to go ahead and invade Virginia and start heading to Richmond. Now, McDowell knows that they lost half of their military when the South seceded, and a large portion of the Union military is now very new, and they're not as trained as um, they usually are, and they aren't quite ready for battle. But Lincoln says, you know what, no, the Confederacy is going to be just as an experience. I think you'll do all right. And McDowell's like, no, you know, I really don't think that we're ready for battle quite yet. And Lincoln's like, nope, I'm the commander-in-chief of the military. I'm telling you to do this, so you're going to do it. So on July 16th of 1861, McDowell officially marches into Virginia with his um, army of 35,000 men. Um, and on their way to Richmond, their paths are blocked by about 22,000 Confederates under the command of a guy of a Confederate military um, officer named P.G.T. Beauregard. His name is fairly long, very French, and sometimes complicated to spell and say. So all of the historians in America got together and decided we were going to call him forever by his initials. So if you Google him, it will be his initials that pop up, PGT Beauregard. Um, so Beauregard is leading 22,000 Confederates, stopping uh, McDowell from making it to Richmond. And they are located in the city of Manassas Junction, which is why we call the Confederates called this the First Battle of Manassas. And they are positioned on the south side of a stream called Bull Run. So that is why the Union calls this uh, the First Battle of Bull Run. If we ever see, there will be multiple battles um, in this unit where we'll have um, one Union name and one Confederate name. I'm going to give you both. 
Uh, the union name is usually after some landmark, like a hill, a stream, a river, or whatever, and the Confederate name is usually after just whatever town the battle is fought in. Um, so McDowell, it actually takes him about 25 days to get all the way from D.C. to Manassas Junction, and by the time he reaches Manassas, Beauregard is able to call in for another 11,000 troops back up by train. So now it's 35,000 versus uh, 33,000 instead of 20,000. 22,000, so they're much more evenly matched. So each army goes into this battle with a very detailed battle plan, but uh, like Lincoln thought, you know, neither um, army is very experienced, so it's pretty much impossible for them to carry out this detailed battle plan, so uh, when the war, or sorry, when the battle gets going, it's very chaotic. Um, so first thing, the Union troops managed to push the Confederates back. Then uh, Beauregard pull, uh, pulls in back up, led by Stonewall Jackson, General Stonewall Jackson. He pushes his troops onto the field, and they stop the Union advance, and then eventually push the Union back. And they are they finally, uh, once Beauregard comes in with infantry, with one last swoop, they uh, force the Union back even further, and the Union finally retreats. Um, so the first battle of Manassas goes down as a Confederate Confederate wins. So two battles, two Confederate wins so far. Um, and the Confederates lose about 2,000 men at Manassas and the Union loses about 3,000. Had Beauregard gone after the Confederates when they retreated, he could have destroyed the Union Army right then, but he didn't do that. I'm sure that's something that he will regret later on. Um, so the message that the impact of the first battle of Manassas is to Lincoln, this is not going to be a short war. This is not going to be over in 90 days. This is going to take a lot longer than that. Um, so after Manassas, Lincoln actually calls for another million volunteers. Remember last time he called for 75,000. Now he's calling for 1 million new volunteers to serve for, instead of 90 days, to serve for a period of three years. So now Lincoln is gearing up for what he knows is about to be an intense, costly, longer war. And because um, Irving McDowell lost this battle, he is fired and he will be replaced by a new general, a guy named George McClellan.